Okay, now we're gonna do the coffee bean challenge. Wow. Woo! Oh no. It's making my mouth so dry. Like it's literally sucking all of... <laughs> oh, that's so gross. Oh man. At Home with Lucas here. So today we're gonna to be talking about blue bottle coffee. And in particular, we're gonna talk about their espresso roast. Yes, people, I finally got my hands on some blue bottle coffee. I'm super, super excited to be putting these beans to the At Home with Lucas test. So in this video, we're gonna be doing a hands-on with the bag. And then we're gonna crack that bad boy open and take a closer look at those beans. After that, we're gonna throw those bad boys over to the burr grinder and break those things down. Perfect for, you got it, the pour over. After that, we're gonna do my favorite part of this whole shebang, the sip test. Yes, people, I absolutely love tasting new coffee and my goal is to taste all the coffees around the world. I'm up to 142, I believe, right now on my way to the rest of the world. So definitely subscribe to this channel if you're into coffee and you want to see this guy sip coffee on camera for your enjoyment. All right, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, let's take a look at this bad boy right quick. So up at the top, or I should say the middle, there is the one-way valved right there, very out in front. You have their logo right there. This is the blue bottle coffee, of course, espresso, tasting notes. Let's look down here real close. You got chocolate, you got nougat. Oh, I have not read or heard that word in so long. You got nougat and brown sugar. I believe that's in um, one of the candy bars. All right, you got the whole bean, of course, USDA certified organic. This is the 12 ounce bag right here. This thing was decently priced. It wasn't the cheapest one out there. Oh, this is a very straightforward bag. This is like what you would get from a uh, local roastery or some sort. All right, there we go. There's the fresh by date right there. Looking Gucci, people. Let's get into this bag. Take a look at the beans. All right, the aroma coming off of here is the smell of coffee beans. And no, I'm just kidding, people. It smells very sweet, very delectable. All right, let's go ahead and take a closer look at these beans. So you can see there's some husk tucked inside of there. These are definitely on the medium roast for sure. A couple shattered beans in there, but nothing too terrible looking. Um, the aroma is definitely sweet. It's definitely delectable. It really is something that I'm, I'm just getting excited. It has that strong, good quality coffee smell to it. Um, but yeah, I'm not really seeing hardly any imperfections. Definitely seems like these beans were grown very nicely and it's definitely looking like it's all one batch. I'm not gonna say this is a blend, but yeah, very interesting looking beans. I'm liking them. All right, we're gonna get these over to the burr grinder and see how they break down. All right, let's take a look at this ground up coffee real quick. So you can see right away there's some blonde husks in there just popping all over the place. That kind of seems to be a theme that's going around nowadays with coffee. It's really interesting. An espresso roast is actually just below a dark roast. So it's somewhere in between a medium and a dark. You would think an espresso roast would actually be a dark roast, but it's not. Um, the actual coffee beans look really good, very rich, very nice looking. Um, they kind of broke down a little bit more jagged than I would have liked. Typically I like to see a little bit more uniform grind, so this is looking a little bit interesting. The smell is extremely pungent, people. It is very, very strong and <laughs> um, off-putting, for sure. It's not a... Um, it's not an enjoyable smell. It's a very harsh smell. Okay, we're gonna be doing four 30 milliliter scoops. So that's gonna be 
220 milliliters, and we're gonna be loading it up into my Coffee Gator pour over maker. Links, of course, for all of this stuff down below. If you wanna buy the grinder, the beans, or the pour over maker, links down below, of course. So we're gonna be doing 500 milliliters of water to four scoops right here. That's our coffee to water ratio. All right, we got my Barista Warrior pour over kettle right here. We're gonna be loading it up with a reverse osmosis water. If you don't know the benefit of water, definitely do a good Google search. You'll actually find that water plays a huge role in how well your coffee actually tastes. Okay, so for a pour over, you want your water to be around 190. That's gonna give you the perfect pour over. It's gonna give you the most flavor and it's not gonna scold and hurt those ground coffee beans that you just work so hard to grind up. All right, let's get into this pour over, people. So the first thing you wanna do is just soak your grounds. You're gonna to wanna to do a clockwise pour always. The first pour is just to soak everything really nicely. It's very similar to a French press. So if you've ever done a French press, you're supposed to soak it for about 30 seconds and then come and pour the rest of your water in. So for this, we're gonna soak it, let it run down for about 30 seconds. And that's good right there. Let's go ahead and hit it with the first pour. This is gonna tell us a lot about the freshness and the quality of the beans. Woo, look at that plumage right there, people. Wow, all right, that is what you want to see. And it keeps growing and growing as I pour. That is awesome. That really shows you that there is some quality in these beans and it shows you that these beans are fresher than the rest out there. Check the stream down here. There we go, look at that. That is looking really nice. Beautiful looking stream. It is running down a little bit quickly, but you can see it's holding up here. That's what you wanna see. It's got that sort of like brownie-like look to it right now. We'll go ahead it with the second pour. You wanna do this within about three minutes. So if you're new to pour over, just set a timer for three minutes. If you don't hit that three minute mark, just speed it up on your next Go around, yeah, that is nice. So like I said, we're gonna go to 500 on the water. All right, we are looking Gucci, people. Yeah, the aroma that's coming off of here is also very strong. It's getting a little bit different than the smell of the ground coffee. Ground coffee was very bitter. This one's getting a little bit more earthy and nutty. All right, we are just about there, people. Yeah, that water shot through here like a cannon. That is, uh, it's it's interesting because it's it's shooting through really fast, but it's also holding up here. So it's um, it, it's doing this sort of mixture of what I normally see. I normally just see one or the other, but this one is holding and releasing quickly. Very, very interesting. All right, there we go. Oh, we went over. Okay, let's go ahead and put the thermometer in here and talk about the optimal sip temperature. So there's actually an optimal sip temperature. It's between 130 and 135. I always let my coffee cool down to 140 before I start sipping. Believe it or not, if you go over 140, you're gonna lose a lot of flavor notes and you're gonna have a less tasty cup of coffee. So try this at home. Let your coffee, mainly black coffee, you can't do this with creamer or sugar or anything like that. Let your coffee cool down to about 140 and then start your sip. All right, let's get into this sip test, people. Okay, all right, that is definitely smelling like an espresso roast for sure. It definitely has that kind of iconic, nutty, sort of bitter, earthy smell to it. Yeah, it definitely smells really strong and I'm actually rethinking the way that the water flowed through those grounds because it shot through so fast. I didn't realize how quickly I had gotten that done until I finished and realized it had only been a couple minutes, if not less than two minutes. So I'm thinking that the grounds were not absorbing as much water and just allowing it to kind of shoot through. I think some were absorbing more than others. So it's very strange, really interesting, but enough jibba jab, let's get into this. It smells very, very strong, even though I think it got a little bit more water than normal. Whoa, whoa, that is very interesting. 
So I'm getting like this fruity berry flavor, which is very, very strange. The initial hit was super um, inviting and enjoyable. Like it was not bitter, harsh, or anything like that. The aftertaste is a little bit watery. Like I said, I think that the, the water was kind of flowing through the grounds and not really being absorbed and then dissipating out of them. So I'm gonna expect a little bit more wateriness, but the first sip, that was actually really, really enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, there is this very inviting, very sweet berry-like taste, almost similar to, I hate to say it, but something like artificial, like, like Gushers or something. If you remember as a kid, eating those Gushers and getting that initial hit of this very interesting um, fruity f berry flavor. Uh, I don't know why Gushers came to mind, but that's, the, the, that, that's what I'm getting right now. And it's very balanced. From the first sip to the, um, wow, it's very balanced. The flavor does not bounce all over the place. It's one solid flavor note that goes all the way back, all the way down, and it doesn't really change, which is very enjoyable. That is something that you actually look for. If they can get it to that point, that means they actually tried. Uh, some companies do not get there and the flavor notes just bounce all over the place. But this is one smooth, cohesive story as it goes down. Yeah. Wow, that is very enjoyable. This is definitely smooth. That's another thing. Oh, there goes my daughter. It is butter, butter smooth. This goes down so smoothly. Um, it's got this like thickness to it, but then the very end is watery. So it's it's a thick and then watery at the very end. Very smooth though. It's definitely not something that's going to hit you with that dark roast out of this world so strong that you just can't stop drinking it. Um, it's definitely more in the medium to dark roast. The aftertaste, the inhale is actually really enjoyable. It's very sweet, very inviting, and it wants you to come back and get another sip. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's a very safe cup of coffee. If you're new to black coffee and you're, you're just getting into it, this is definitely one to buy. Even though it is an espresso roast, most people think, oh, you gotta throw that into a machine and, and do an espresso shot. No, you don't have to do that. This is actually just the name of the roast. It's actually not specifically designed for espresso machines. It's just like a French roast or an Italian roast. Yeah, I could definitely see this being consumed. Actually, I could see it being consumed with sweet breakfast food. So you could definitely do this with sweet or you could go salty, but I would actually go a little bit more sweet because it does have that fruity, earthy sort of berry taste to it. But it seems like you could go either way with your breakfast food or pastry or whatever you want. You could go salty or you could go really, really sweet and this would actually do phenomenal. So definitely a quality bean, definitely a quality cup of coffee. All right, let's give this a star rating. So I'm tasting the quality, I'm getting the boxes checked off. I'm not hitting that five star at home with Lucas star of approval, but I'm gonna give it a solid 4.9 star rating out of five stars. It is absolutely a phenomenal cup of coffee. The quality is there, the, the, the balance is there, the enjoyment is there. This is definitely a cup of coffee for just simple enjoyment. It's not gonna hit you super hard and just throw you into another world, it's gonna give you a smooth, easygoing experience and you're gonna absolutely love it. Bye it! Okay, not the best looking crema that I've ever seen. It's looking a little bit thin on the top, but nonetheless, it looks good. Let's go ahead and get into this bonus sip. 
All right, let's get into this bonus sip, people. Woo, that smells so strong. That Warsh bean to espresso machine back there definitely packs a serious punch, people. It makes some of the strongest espresso I've ever had in my entire life. I've not had a huge amount, but this is definitely on the level, people. All right, let's go. Whoa, that definitely throws you back. Woo! <laughs> that is some serious power right there. I am not kidding you. Wow, the aroma in the mouth is so on 10. It is literally like coating my mouth. The inhale is like, it's like I'm, it's like I just had jet fuel. Like, I'm not even kidding. It is so, so strong. Yeah. The sweetness is gone. It's just pure bitter. It's just so bitter and strong. The, the, the middle taste is like berry. The aftertaste is very earthy. A um, little bit of nuttiness down by the molars. Definitely has this like harsh sweetness. So the sweetness is there, but it's very, very harsh. It's like roasted brown sugar or something. Burnt, more like burnt brown sugar. Mmm. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that is insanely strong. That is flavor on 10. So strong that you can't like really find all the flavor notes. If you're going to add all your cream and your sugar and all that fun stuff, and you actually have a worse bean to espresso machine, then this is going to be the way to go. Do a double shot like I did, throw in your cream, throw in your sugar, all your cake and ice cream and all that fun stuff and you're gonna be flying high. You're gonna have all of that strong espresso taste, and then you're also gonna have all of your flavoring on top of that, but you're not gonna lose this flavor. Yeah, it's definitely not enjoyable as is. It's one of those you should be adding stuff to it, make it into a latte, make it into something else, a cappuccino. This right here is, uh, I'm gonna give it a 4.1 out of five stars. It's just too much espresso packed into this little cup right here. So strong, so powerful. Um, yeah, definitely go with a pour over. Definitely go with some other form of brewing. Do not uh, buy this for espresso drinking alone. <laughs> All right, there you go. That's the Blue Bottle Espresso Coffee. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely clearly click that like button. If you want to join the Adam Lucas family and you want to be a part of this crew, hit that subscribe button. Every time I get a subscriber, I get a boost to make more and more videos. And it's because of you guys, I surpassed 6K. Yes, people are on my way to 7K, but I need your help. Yes, you right there. Tell your friends, tell your family. This guy's on YouTube. They should go subscribe and watch my channel. But as always, I thank you for watching each and every one of my videos, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.